Have you yeah. received threats of violence? So I feel like there is a violent undertone, um, if not a direct call to, you know, um, incite uh, violent acts. Um, and I feel like it's not even, um, how do I say, it's not even veiled enough that anybody can argue about it. Do you know what I mean? I couldn't believe it, you know, I make chick flicks. I am not, I'm not like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to send this Aisha to Berlin. <laughs> I mean, like that's not me. In fact, it was my dad who watched the first cut of the film and decided and told Karan that you send it to Toronto. I think it's hard to be a woman in a place of authority. You will know this mm. um, because I feel like people are constantly confused and sometimes agitated by your audacity and um, they are constantly second guessing whether your achievements are yours but they, are, they don't hesitate to make sure that your mistakes come back to you. Welcome to this conversation with someone so interesting uh, Partly because of the work she does, partly because she rarely talks uh, <laughs> to, to the press. And some, some of her stuff right now is controversial. Uh, joining me right now for this conversation is entrepreneur and film producer Rhea Kapoor. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for speaking to me. First of all, of I mean, big film that's yeah. come out. <laughs> <laughs> it's momentous. It's momentous. Just like I'm just the yeah. Yeah. So big film that's come out and you know, I was struck by anyone who's on social media and I spent a lot of time on, on Instagram. It seemed like a, I was reading about it from yeah. every corner. Right? It was a lot of promotions. You yeah. guys were overseas at Toronto as well. Yeah. But you haven't spoken to anybody else. No yeah, other I didn't interviews. even go to TIFF. Why? So, you know, I just feel like I have been surrounded by fame ever since I was a little girl, yeah, you know, yeah. and it never held any allure to me. In fact, it scares me a little bit because I feel like it changes the way you live your life. Mm. And I like my life and I really don't want it to change. I like, you know, going out with my friends for a drink or disappearing on a holiday or, you know, whatever, just chilling with my husband, going to dinner if I feel like. And to be honest with you, I... I don't really enjoy being on camera because I it's too much uh, it's being too conscious about yourself it's too much attention into you know yourself and I'm not interested so much in myself as I am in like telling stories and putting out ideas you know so it genuinely like I would get sick of myself I'd be like get away <laughs> <laughs> go away but um, and plus the other thing is that it doesn't hold that allure for me that it holds for everybody else because I've seen the ups, I've seen the downs, I've seen my dad go through it, I've seen Sonam go through it, I've seen the rest of my family go through it. So it was never a thing for me that I need to be recognizable, I need to be famous, like those things, they don't hold as much value for me. What holds value for me is, you know, um, being of value and mm. um, that's really what it's about. I suppose the audience would all be familiar with the ups of being fam famous. Yes. What are the downs? I feel like to a certain extent, like I'll tell you the story, um, you know the, the movie theatre opened up at Palladium uh, mm. a few years ago and Karan and I, my husband, we just started dating and we went for this movie and we were in like the first couple of dates, you know, and you know when you're in like on like, you know, in that first few months, there's this like nervousness, you don't really know yeah. each other that well and you want to like keep a, you know, you want to impress each other in a way and we were coming down the escalator and these two boys in front of us were literally speaking about my father and they were like Anil Kapoor something something and he cracked a little bit of a nasty joke mm -hmm. you know and um, we were right behind and Karan looked at me and I looked at him and he was like what am I supposed to do do I fight this guy <laughs> like do I say something are you gonna say something and I just looked at him and I was like yeah, just huh. relax and for me it's normal Mm. But I don't know for how many girls or boys it's normal to have a stranger speak about your father, sister, you know, family member in front of you and you say In nothing. whatever way they please. In whatever way yeah, they please, yeah, as yeah. though it's their right, yeah. you know. So in that way, that is challenging. Mm. But, um, and in a lot of ways also I feel like if you are that person that's grown up and everybody around you is speaking about whatever your dad or your sister in a certain way especially with my father right like I 
not only love my father i admire him for his accomplishments i admire him for the way that he's conducted himself all of these different things and the standard gets set and not just within your family all around you and everyone's looking at you as if now what are you going to do yeah you know what i yeah. mean and um for any kid i mean even if you have a really successful mother father whatever and they're not in the film industry but my level of expectation is on the public forum mm-hmm. you know for everybody to see and it is intimidating but all of these things that are the downs don't compare to the ups and the opportunities that i have had so i can't really complain about them all i can do is acknowledge that they exist so let's come to the to the film right now that's yeah. sort of in the eye of uh, the storm and i was i was just reading some of the reviews some of the um, responses on social media which can only be described as trolling yeah tell me what that experience has been like in terms of the response that you've got yeah. to the film was this something that you were expecting it's it's a it's ahead of its time in in its yes. fundamental idea um you know to be very honest with you i knew the film would be polarizing yeah i never thought let me put this film together with these people and it's going to be a box office smash you know yeah. like i never thought it's going to be a populist film mm. um but what has um I've been pleasantly surprised by a lot of the audience reactions to it as well mm-hmm. in terms of people the kind of audience that I didn't expect to enjoy it has also enjoyed it you know um older men younger men you know uh, older women um conservative women yeah. to a certain yeah. extent but at the same time what I what is kind of taken you know me by surprise is the violence and you know kind of hateful nature of some of the trolling and i feel like that is something that shouldn't be tolerated i mean as artists as creative people we should be able to express ourselves express our ideas as women we we should be able to speak about whatever we want to speak about right it's we're talking about our own experiences and to see the kind of negativity and anger that some people feel when women have freedom is it it in the in a country that's supposed to be a free and democratic country where you're supposed to be able to speak about what you want to speak about it just kind of that is kind of what took me by surprise and the fact that people are just tolerating it and they're just not saying anything about it so i feel like to a certain extent that's wrong it makes see for somebody like me i have privilege i come from a place where maybe these people can't get to me mm. but when i think about younger female filmmakers maybe there's a 22 year old girl and she really wants to make a movie about her most intimate experiences will she be safe mm. is she going to be okay have you, you received know? threats of violence so i feel like there is a violent undertone um if not a direct call to you know um incite uh, violent acts um and i feel like it's not even um how do i say it's not even veiled enough that anybody can argue about it do you know what i mean and it's a little bit in the face mm. and i i feel like you know i thought about talking about it i really did yeah. because i don't want to come across you know we always so worried about how we come across you know and um i thought that no you know what i don't care what people think and i don't care what people think is my intent as a filmmaker as a business woman about talking me being a woman and me wanting other girls to flourish and feel safe is more important than that so yes i feel like there is a violent undertone and it 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 makes me feel uncomfortable it makes me feel afraid and the only reason that i feel more confident than ever and more determined than ever to keep making movies like this is because that fear and that kind of trepidation was with me for a short while but then it 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 kind of got flooded and took over by this new rush of like you know what if i don't keep doing this then then who will yeah. you know what i'm trying to say so i feel like to a certain extent that kind of gave me a little more confidence to come and speak to you as well as you know we were talking about it and i am camera shy so i was like should i do this should i not do this will people think that i'm saying this for you know whatever attention or any of these things but i feel like the people that know me well enough know me that that is what i'm allergic to yeah. so if i'm speaking about it it obviously is important because 
it's our job as a society to uplift those who don't have a voice it's our job as a society to talk about things that other people won't speak about that people are experiencing people are feeling the reason this film was made and the reason it was appreciated the way it was appreciated even overseas it's because there are honest voices in the film yeah. and they are inspired by real stories of real girls and those girls stories deserve to be told in a funny way in a fun way however we want to tell them you know and you can't tell me what story to tell because mm. i can't only tell stories that make you comfortable you know and even if you are uncomfortable there is a way to express yourself and this isn't that this isn't that so you're yeah. saying if you don't like my film don't watch it yeah but that doesn't give you the right to threaten violence yeah it it absolutely doesn't i mean it's it's just not it's not okay and it doesn't it doesn't encourage an environment in which artists can grow and tell new stories and challenge each other mm. and create and you know um if you watch this film and you see the way that girls and boys both react to the film the point of the movie is to make you accept yourself for who you are and not constantly yeah. second guess how you feel and what you think and concentrate on your flaws so the message of the movie is extremely important and i feel like that gets diminished by this kind of hateful rhetoric you know it just it's 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 not good for young filmmakers it's not good for young artists and for us in general the society is just sad yeah i want to talk to you about uh, female sexual pleasure yeah. and acknowledging it on the big screen yes. um in a theater release yeah. which i think uh, we've seen very little happen yeah. i mean the last time it happened was well, we the wedding correct. which again was your film yeah. it I, that was not what the whole film was about but that was the bit that sort yeah. of got the most attention a uh, couple of other films li lipstick under my burqa a couple of other yeah. films have acknowledged uh, female sexual pleasure not as many as the ones that acknowledge male sexual pleasure not which is at all, all yeah uh, you know so or desire or desire yeah. um what what drove you to pick that as a topic yeah um i mean in this environment where there's such a lot of anger there's such a lot of threatening so there's so many yeah. uh, freely filed firs yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> about culture uh and when you picked that film and obviously spoke to the people around you did you get a lot of you know you'll get typecast as that kind of, of filmmaker 100% You know I say I told my father this the other day I was like promoting this movie is mm. very much like being a woman <laughs> you know you can't be too vanilla nobody will go yes you can't be too out there and sexual because everybody will think you're a certain way you know and so it's been an it's definitely been a learning for me to try to figure out how to put this story out there i mean for me i don't remember a film like wiki donor getting this kind of backlash it was mm. literally about you know a man who donates sperm to so many people at the end of the film there were like some 200 odd kids, kids yeah. you know and um uh, i thought it was a brilliant film i thought it was great but i never saw it with that lens and the reason i decided to do it even though when we were narrating the film to people it got them a little bit like oh really this is this is the topic of the film is because i was like you know what like I feel like sex is a thing that's used to control women. Don't yes. sit like that. You're giving the guy the wrong idea. Don't wear this lipstick. You know, uh don't go there. You know, don't go there at this time of the night. You're asking for it. You know, what is that? It's control. And I feel like our relationship with sex is so so much riddled with shame and guilt that at some point how are we expecting it to be positive? Yeah. You know. and i really want young girls to have a positive relationship with themselves with sexuality because i know for me and my friends and my sisters how difficult it's been to overcome that and how important it is to find your you know whether it's about the way you look your self esteem your sexuality your strength this is all one thing yeah. you see and it's you know you it, know it's so interesting i know it's not just for indian women but particularly for indian women sure. uh your sexuality has to constantly be at that sweet spot where you are uh yeah <laughs> interesting good and attractive yeah. enough to be qualify for marriage yeah. but not so interesting and not attractive to qualify outside of it <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? so i get this whole thing that, that balance between uh, the um you know the sati and the savitri correct basically. correct <laughs> you know correct. somewhere in between um and i think that we spend our in the better part of our youth mm trying to find that balance like how how am i uh, uh, you know how do i stay between being boring yeah. and being like what what they called auntie yeah 
like Bhenji, yeah. Auntie, yeah. which is that you're just not hot enough, yeah. or you're too hot, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know you're. Because it's all through the male gaze, right? It's through society's gaze. What are they comfortable with? Yeah. You know, uh, be at, attract me enough so that I may be interested in you, but not so much that it makes me intimidated and uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, um, uh, put yourself out there to an extent where I want to desire you or I desire you, but not so much where it feels like that desire lives in you as well. Yeah. You know, because that is scary, that is intimidating. And I feel like, you know, especially when you're a young girl, you're a teenager and you're starting to, you know, there are hormones and you're starting to like boys or like girls or whatever yeah. it is. And you don't know what is right. You are so confused and there are no movies. Yeah. There are no movies for girls. Like I learned about things like, you know, uh, casual sex or dating or relationships through watching American shows and American films rom and things and, and things rom coms. Like that. yeah, yeah. The, that's the reason I make the films that I make is because we need to have at least because our parents aren't going to talk about it. Mm. You know, I don't know many girls or boys that are like, you know, I learned about you know, sex or lying or, or drinking or any of these things that we go through as kids and we go through in our lives as we become adults through informed conversations with adults or parents. Yeah. We're all too shy about it. So pop culture and films become our reference point. I don't want people getting this news and get girls getting this information just from the internet. That scares me, you know. I want to create stories that make girls aware of you know their own value and what is right and what is wrong and what makes you a good girl and what makes you a bad girl and all of these questions that feel like they're the most important thing in the world when you're 15 and 16 because I know I I was a yeah. middle child I was Sonam Kapoor's younger sister you know I went through all of these things so and it meant the world to me so yeah definitely I feel like we're constantly walking this cultural tightrope and it's stressful for anybody but more so for young Indian girls. So you've made a conscious choice that you will tell stories of women yes. written by women um, and are they now people are turning around and saying obviously troll ho you know if you make films like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do I you mean, feel that there's a need to like build in a thicker skin at this point? I mean my skin is thick enough. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I uh, want to uh, make more movies. Mm -hmm. I want to live a life of dignity, integrity. I want to express myself freely. I know my conscience is clear. And um, to be very honest with you, I uh, have the privilege of knowing that I'm safe and sound in my home. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be fine no matter what. So why not me? Yeah. Why not somebody like me? I mean, I people talk about privilege and being a star kid and doing all of these things. But first of all, I didn't have a choice in the matter. <laughs> <laughs> I was born to these parents. He's the only dad I've had. <laughs> and I love him and he's worked so hard to be able to provide these opportunities for his family. So what am I going to do with that opportunity? I'm going to use it and do things with it that other people can't do. And at the end of it, at least it'll matter that I made these movies. At least something small will shift. And um, whether it's developing a thick skin or whether it's, you know, following my own gut and sometimes you do great, sometimes you do success, succeed in other ways. It just all seems, I don't know why, but when I go to sleep at night, I sleep peacefully, you know. Yeah. I do want to ask you this. You did mention a little bit. Do you believe that Female sexual pleasure, the idea that women enjoy sex yes. and desire it, yeah. intimidates people and makes society uncomfortable. Apparently so, Faye. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it is, to a certain extent, if, if people perceive a woman as enjoying uh, pleasure or sexual pleasure or whatever, it seems like a bad thing. And I don't understand why. Like, for me, it's always been so crazy that for years and decades, we've been so okay with watching sexual violence on screen. Yes. You know, whether it's rape scenes or this and that. They've been literally in our yes. history <laughs> of our cinema. And nobody freaks out about that. Nobody's like, you cannot have this kind of move. Like, and sexual violence, that's scintillating. That's meant and to excite. And it's shot in a certain way. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I agree yeah. with you. And I, I think that that to me is what disturbs me. Is I'm like, you're okay with this. But if a woman has a positive experience with something sexual, 
you're not okay with that mm-hmm. and 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 that says so much about people perceiving that thinking that this is okay but that is not and um, i think that if we all encourage more women and more girls to have a positive attitude about these an uh, integral part of everybody's life eventually it's going to be a part of everyone's life yeah. you know yeah. then we'd all honestly have a happier home life as well <laughs> I agree with you. Let, let's talk a little bit about uh, the film itself. Yeah. Again, uh, the interesting thing for me was uh, an ensemble cast entirely yes. of women. Yes. Uh, all female leads. Yeah. Again, the last time we saw that was yes. Veeradi Wedding, which yes. was your film as well. Um, also, I found it interesting that these were all newcomers that you picked. Yeah. Why did you pick newcomers? Because I honestly felt like. the story and the film i wanted to be driven solely by the content of it mm. i didn't want it to be this thing of this girl who's like i can't get my life right and mm. all these girls around her that have all these flaws and issues but they all look like mm. they're killing it <laughs> <laughs> i mean they all i i i feel like we have this ability to take an actor or an a, like a bunch of actors that we feel will be quote unquote commercial or saleable yeah. or um they putting them in a place for not the right reason which is that they'd be perfect for the part and i feel like when i was during covid i was reading all these you know people comments and opinions about you know the way that we cast our movies and i was like let me try something i want to create a movie where i literally look at it just as who is the right person for this part who is going to tell the story as authentically as possible who is going to feel like they deserve to be here just because of their skill and their ability and the fact that they suit the role yeah and that is literally how we cast the like the whole there's, film there's been some criticism that uh, other than bhumi everybody else are influencers yeah. and so they bring in a lot of yeah. social media yeah. clout yes. uh, to the film and is that why you picked them Actually no uh, to be honest with you uh, we had a pretty rigorous abhimanyu ray one of the most respected casting directors in our industry cast the film and we had several rounds of auditions and if you see the like in fact i put up one audition the other day on my on my instagram you'll see that they see the thing is it's a very tricky thing with content creators because i feel like people are like oh they have this following but why do they have the following Hmm. is because they're funny they have good timing they connect the characters connect people like them people like their sense of humor and to some extent for some it translates into acting as well so i feel like it's like the chicken and the egg situation you hmm. know what i'm trying to say so um i i don't agree with that i feel like if i really cared about following then the whole story would be different you know right. so it just kind of happened to fall into that like in fact um uh shibani literally did the audition by mistake and like kusha came into it much later and then sushant came into it much yeah. later and it just everything with this movie has just been is just fallen into place organically tell me about casting sushant yeah. uh trans actor yes. playing a, a you Love. know a, a cis het man in the beginning yes. so yeah so d- tell me how that came about it came about because i honestly when i began casting this part i started thinking conventionally because that's what our conditioning is and i was like oh sh- who should i take for this part and all and then the more maybe i think a month later literally a month later i'm like what is wrong with me i was like why am i thinking like everybody else mm. and i was like who is right for this part i mean we have straight actors playing trans characters all the time why not have a trans character who is a trans like um woman in the film play you know a heterosexual man a heterosexual man and i spoke to keshav suri um and i was like dude like tell me how to do Love. this yeah <laughs> you know yeah. and uh, he was like audition this person and mm. i literally cast her after her first audition mm. like i saw the audition like i said everything kind of just fell into, fell into place. place like This movie was not like you know building a company or a brand. It was just a labor of love. Like I, uh, I know I've grown up with commercial Hindi films. I, you know, I'm making crew with Karina Kriti and Tabu and Diljit Dosanjh after this. I get it. I understand how to build things and how to make things in a certain way to serve a certain purpose. And I get that. I get economics. Yeah. I I understand all that. I'm, 
I've worked like a few years <laughs> now in this industry, but this film was genuinely just poured out of all our hearts. It it just happened. Whatever felt right in our heart is what we did. And it went to the Toronto Film Festival. You did. didn't go to Toronto. I didn't. I didn't <laughs> arrive. <laughs> well, you didn't arrive. But um, it did really well. Yes, Tell it us did. about that reception. That reception was amazing. People were FaceTiming me while the crowd was like clapping and mm. hooting and you know, I, it was it was just another. I couldn't believe it. You know, I make chick flicks. I am not, I'm not like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to send this Aisha to Berlin. <laughs> you know I mean? Like that's not me. In fact, it was my dad who watched the first cut of the film and decided and told Karan that you send it to Toronto. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know about it. He literally emailed it from his personal account and we didn't lobby for it. We didn't do anything. We just got an email one day that it got in. It was as simple, literally as simple as that. And I don't know, things have just happened for this movie and the kind of reception that this film got. I mean, Ekta called me up and she's like, it's Gaty Galaxy. Mm. <laughs> she was like, it's a stadium and she was so happy and my dad was so happy, the cast and I mean, honestly, the reception that we got was just, it's, it's, uh, I know it's a moment that may never come back. So I'm holding it in my heart and I'm cherishing it and I'm very proud of it. I'm very, very proud that this movie got seen on such a large platform. That's excellent. I do want to talk to you about your other businesses as well. Tell me what that's like. What is it? I mean, you could have chosen to say, hey, listen, I do films every so often and that's what I do for a living. Sure. What makes you push yourself into other businesses? What is it like being a female entrepreneur? I mean, I know, but tell them. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> Why is it hard? So basically, uh, but it's a lot of fun. I love it and um, to be honest when so I was a I am still uh, to a certain extent a stylist mm. and a producer and I think that at some level when Sonam got married I started to get a little like you know styling Sonam Sonam and I were collaborators you know um, people don't realize what an impact fashion can have on a lot of people's lives um, whether it's you know finding a way to get people to express themselves feel, you know feel like they can be who they are um, all of these different things it's 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 an art it's collaboration it's putting out stories again putting out characters like Sonam and I never were like what is the most trendy or expensive thing I can wear today it was more like who do you want to be today hmm. you know what idea are we putting out and things like that so it was a collaboration and beyond that and when she decided to take some time off go to London I was like, do I want to be a celebrity stylist, hmm. you know, because I had done that for so many years and maybe not working with Sonam didn't feel like the same. Yeah. It felt like I needed to grow, I needed to do something more and honestly I was really restless and I wanted to challenge myself. So I decided to take up all of these different things, I did all of these different collaborations, I've done a furniture collection right now. Um, I got into ice cream only because like I love food, I love cooking and I want to know what all these business businesses are like. I want to understand what goes behind them, what makes a food business successful versus a jewellery business successful versus a like a design business successful. I want to know, I want to understand because when I was a kid and we were learning to do production and we were learning to do all of these things, it's like oh you keep the girls away from the business side of things. Yes you know let's let's keep her in the fun like creative section yeah the interior decorating yeah yeah yeah, yeah you know and I, I i i i really felt a sense of i want the whole story mm. i want to know what this feels like what does it feel like to put something out there from start to finish you said being a a, a woman entrepreneur is hard tell yeah. me why I think it's hard to be a woman in a place of authority you will know this mm. um because i feel like people are constantly confused and sometimes agitated by your audacity and um, they are constantly second guessing whether your achievements are yours but they they don't hesitate to make sure that your mistakes come back to you mm -hmm. you know and um, I, I find that I find that we are so as women whether it's in the house or whether and I think it starts from the home we're always the peacemakers you know, yeah. like my mom will make sure that I wished my grandmother on her birthday. 
even if it's my dad's home. You know, my mom will make sure that everybody goes to the family function. My mom will keep the peace, you know. And if something goes wrong on the home front, it's always a woman's fault. You see yes. what I mean? Yes. <laughs> so, um, I feel like coming from that, you don't want to ever incite trouble or yeah. be angry or be upset or call people out because then you are creating the trouble. Yes. You are the troublemaker. And that is the conflict of a woman in authority. It's your job yeah. to stir stuff up. That's how stuff you know, gets there was done. This, uh, there was this gathering of women entrepreneurs I was speaking to. Yeah. And somebody asked me exactly this. And you know, I said that we get conditioned as girls, from the time we were little girls, to be as non-confrontational as possible. Be nice girls, right? Don't fight with anybody. Don't mess up your hair. Yeah. And so we carry a lot of that into adulthood. And as, as entrepreneurs and women who run businesses, you're not there to make friends. You are not. And you you shouldn't care if someone dislikes you because yeah. in all likelihood they will dislike you at the end of it. You're there to get the job done. Yeah. So you shouldn't care about like, you know, oh, this person will not like me. And the funny thing about it is that little clip of what I said got uploaded on the internet and then I had this... Uh, of course! <laughs> Of what is wrong with you? Yeah, let's make a movie about it. Advice, <laughs> and you're telling women to sort of, you know, this, what, what was it? There was, you know, it was about it was toxic. Yeah. And what I was saying was so toxic, and I just feel that we live in an environment where you can almost never get it right. Yeah. Someone is always upset with you, and the internet allows these upset people mm. room to say really harsh things. It does. Yeah. It really does. I think that, you know, um, I think that we just need to be aware of the fact that our f the people that matter to us in our lives know who we are. Mm. And no matter how much that inner voice of conditioning tells you, don't do this, don't cause trouble, now don't go saying that. Like for example, a woman such as yourself. Okay, you have, I literally follow every piece of information you put out on Instagram, right? Like for me, yeah. It's it's like I look at you as a woman that has accomplished what no man could, you know, which is you have brought legitimate news back to to the internet, which is this <laughs> like you can trust the internet when it's your account. That is not a small thing, Faye. Like, but even you remember that one clip going out and people trolling yeah. you, and you there's a war going on, you know. You have <laughs> you have important stuff. <laughs> You have important things to think about, yeah. like, you know, um, which is why I'm so happy that we, you found the time to do this. Like for me, it's like you've got stuff to do, but still it's stuck in your mind, even though you have achieved so much and you have so many important things on your mind. Yeah. It's our conditioning. It, and trust me when I'm telling you whether it's even somebody I know who's got a bias, an open bias, talking about how we have done the wrong thing by making this movie or we put forth the wrong idea and all. I have to tell myself every day, you're not supposed to feel ashamed of this. There yeah. is nothing to feel guilty about, you know, and and the people who cheered on you in the beginning and were like, no, no, you do this, you go girl, whatever. They see one ne piece of negative feedback, even yes. they come to you and they're like, you know, maybe next time you yeah. should think about such and such. And I'm like, even you, yeah. you know, we just, we just have to make ourselves strong mm. and we just have to constantly remember that we have been you know uh, infused with good values good morals we are aware women we are good sensible people. women we're yeah. good, good people and we're not doing things without an intent and our intent is good and that's all that yeah. we can do i think that also you know we were talking about this before we started the interview right i think lily singh had put out this statement about don't make marriage the victory no oh, yeah for girls, right? Where yeah. from the time you're this high, you're being told um, to run towards this one goal when you get married, and yeah. that is when your life will actually—it's the be all. Yeah, it's the be all. And yeah. I, I remember, I used to wear. I started wearing glasses when I was in the first standard, which yeah. is you know I was the only kid in my class who wore glasses, and I was told a lot by helpful aunts to eat carrots so that my eyesight improves. Otherwise, no one will marry me. Because back then, it was uh, if you wore glasses, nobody yeah. would want you. Yeah. Um, right? Which is so ridiculous if you think about it yeah. now. Um, I mean, I remember um, a, a, 
a contact lens advertisement. <laughs> Do you, you remember, you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> no, but I kind of have a very, where this, this, uh, I have two, three ads from the 90s that have traumatized me. <laughs> where she's getting dressed and she looks gorgeous. Yeah. And then there's this beautiful song playing in the background. Then she puts on her glasses and the whole thing freezes, saying, oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <gasps> that, right? And then she has to take off her glasses and she puts on these lenses and she's beautiful again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? And it was so damaging yeah, for yeah. me, personally. Yeah. yeah. And this, this whole idea of all pop culture sort of wiring it into girls, that you are only valid if someone chooses to marry you. Oh my God, so this damaging. is so what the film is about. <laughs> This is yeah. so what the film is about. Kanika Kapoor thinks that because she's single in her 30s, there's something wrong with wrong her. She's a with defective her. piece, is what she calls herself. And um, the symptom of that is her lack, her inability to have an orgasm. It's just a symptom. But the larger story is that she wants that, she wants that fairy tale ending, mm. and she feels like she's not getting it because something's wrong with her, you know. And this movie was inspired by all my single friends speaking to me, talking to me, being at my house every day during COVID you know, when there was no lockdown. <laughs> so, um, I couldn't believe that these, these, these successful, intelligent yeah. women think there's something wrong with them, yeah. you know, and, and it goes beyond my friends. I mean, cousins, family members who are unmarried or whatever it is, everyone's constantly picking at them. They're just you know, picking is, at this them. This is amazing. Uh, if you consider the fact that a man who is single in he his 30s, yeah. Um, is the one that got away. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Yeah. And if he's single in his 40s, he's a he's silver a bachelor. fox. He's yeah, a yeah. bachelor. Yeah. But a woman who is single is, is something's terribly wrong with her. Spinster. Is a spinster who's going to turn into a cat lady and like an yeah. old maid very quickly. And she is in some way a failure. Yeah. And she has failed. Yeah. Uh, and it doesn't matter how fabulous she is professionally, how yeah. she supports an entire family or whatever yeah. else she's doing. But somehow we've made this the yardstick of measure. Yeah, and we don't criticize men who decide not to get married as destroying family values. Yeah. We don't say that, oh, you don't, you don't believe in the Indian family, you know, but we say that to women. Why? I don't, um, I feel like regardless of whether you believe in marriage or don't believe in marriage, I feel like a person's journey is way beyond their marital status and that is what mm, this film mm, says. Mm. I feel like whether you're, even if you got married at 20, you probably don't have a sense of yourself, what makes you happy, what you want in life. And even if you're married with four kids, you may be completely discontent or you may be the happiest person. That has yeah. nothing to do with your marital status. And that is simply what the film says. The film doesn't say we don't like marriage. The film doesn't say you need it. The film says that Regardless, this isn't about that. This is about yeah. you. And it's interesting for me that the ensemble cast has two single mothers. It has a grandmother. Yeah. It has someone who is currently married and yeah. someone who's not yeah. currently married because that's what society is made of. A hundred percent. And now let's burden society with the thought that all these women enjoy sex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not you. Know, yeah. I mean, there is this pocket in which. Or would like or, to. Yeah. Or would like to. <laughs> There's this pocket in which society assumes that only married women yeah. of a certain age yeah. are allowed sex, whether yeah. they enjoy it or not. Yeah. So the ones who are not married are not allowed, the ones who are divorced, the ones yeah. who are widowed, the ones who are older, yeah. uh, the ones who are LGBTQI on that spectrum yes. are not allowed. Nobody is allowed. Yeah. Only this pocket is yes. allowed. Yes. Uh, pro purely for the purpose of uh, you know, the male gaze and procreation, it's really unfair. They have kids. Yeah. Um, it is unfair because I, I think that, like I said, it's as much part of our lives as it is for men. It is as much part of our self-exploration as women as it is for men. And it confuses us and, and bewilders us and makes us yearn just as much, much as it does for men. And it also forms a lot of who we are you know, the way that we perceive ourselves sexually, the way that we feel like people perceive us sexually, yeah. you know, all of these different things, it, it forms your confidence as a woman with the inner relationship, it, 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 it can, um, a certain kind of sexual relationship with a partner can, can change everything for you, the way you perceive the partner, the way you perceive relationships, the way you perceive yeah. love. So I feel like it's completely unfair and it is, it's almost not allowing women a seat on the table and not allowing women to get the information or to, to, to tell these stories to each other so that we can have them. Yeah. We need them too, yeah. you know. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, I mean, this whole idea that it's like uh, you're not we allowed to in create, this room. <laughs> we have to create like these pockets, these safe spaces where women can talk. Yeah. In secret, but yeah. why do we need to talk in secret yeah. anymore? Yeah. Uh, you know, why can't we openly have these conversations? We because it makes people uncomfortable. That's mm. what I'm trying to say. The idea of your mother, or your sister, or whatever your having, grandmother. or your grandmother, or your wife for that matter, mm -hmm. having this conversation makes you uncomfortable. Well, I'm sorry, I cannot help you. What do I say? You know? you know, what I also think is interesting about your films is that um, most of the time, if, if we count our mainstream pop culture Bollywood films um, with female leads, they have to be super achievers yeah. in order to qualify to, you know, that character has to be a super achiever in order to qualify for that story to be told. Yeah. So you have to be like a Mary Com, you have to be, yeah. you have to be. Or you have to be a martyr. Or you have to be a martyr. Yeah. They, you know, nobody's telling stories about just regular girls. Yeah. Yes, I, I have struggled with that. <laughs> Um, because that is exactly my point of view. I mm. feel like you need to see a woman a certain way. Oh, she's, you know, in search for her child, or she's taking revenge for a for yes. a for a yes. child, or revenge for her husband, mm. or you know, uh, she's committing some act of martyrdom or sacrifice, and that's what makes her a great woman. Yeah. You know, um, and these are legitimate stories, but they're not the only stories that deserve to be told. You know, we have told, we have watched rom com since the since I'm twelve years old about men who can't commit. Every movie yeah, is about yeah, a dude about that a can't man, and, and a woman who desperately is like seeking and a woman who comes seeking. and she changes him and now he commits and now they live yeah, happily yeah, ever after yeah, and yeah. they don't show you what happens after <laughs> that, you know? Why is it that so many of those stories are valid but this is frivolous? Yeah. This is superficial. Imagine me telling a story about a girl who just doesn't want to get married. Yeah. Tell me what's next? You you did mention what you were working. What is crew? Uh, it's a tentative title, it's a working title, yeah. it's um, a film that I have shot almost I think 80% of, we have a little bit left, it's with uh, Tabu, Karina Kriti, it's a comedy, mm -hmm. Diljeet is also really? in the film, yeah, it's really fun, it's a proper masala movie, it's probably the largest film I've ever done, it is an ambitious venture and um, um, it's set in a completely new world um, and um, I'm, I'm very excited about it. I, I, I can't wait for people to see it. I, I just, I can't tell you how fun that movie is and I just, I just, I, I, I want to finish it now and then edit it and it comes out in March. All right. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for speaking with thank me. Thank you. This it was been, fun. This is, this is a lot of fun. I'm glad we got, we finally got down to doing this yeah, after talking about it I for arrived. months. Um, and uh, congratulations on the success you've had already. Thank you and so much. And good luck. Thank you so much for you too. Thank you.